what we're gonna do is we're gonna time how long it takes for the ping pong ball launcher to be launched and then hit the ground. What that's gonna give us is gonna give us T. You know that equation that we use for the height? We know what the initial height is, we know what the final height is, we know what the we know what acceleration is gonna be, right? So the only things that we don't know are initial velocity and we don't know time. Okay? So we can't solve that if we don't if we have two unknowns. Well, if we calculate, if we time how long it takes to go in the air and come back down, that gives us time, and then we can put that back in and solve for the initial velocity. Does that make sense? Because that'll be our only unknown. So each of the groups is going to have to calculate uh, time how long it takes for their ping pong ball launches to go up and back down. Are you guys ready? Each one of them should be able to um, adjust the angle of launch. Yeah. Um, from the mounted position. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, they calculate what angle they're going to launch it at. In, on paper, in front of me, and then they yeah. shoot it off to see yeah. if it, it's yeah. going to hit the target. Cool. And they're going to get graded based on their calculations and then how close they actually yeah. get. Yeah. So both of those yeah. things. So I went through um, the different accelerated motion equations with them and uh, spent a day just doing you know, basic, kind of generic problems with them. Yeah. And then we tied it into the ping pong ball launchers. Um, and then I had them come up with the, the question that we can't finish it out because we don't know what our initial velocity was. So we had that yeah. conversation about how we could calculate initial velocity yeah. and decided we needed to go out and, and time, time yeah. the ping pong balls. For the most part, the students understood the importance of calculating time uh -huh. um, and the importance of the project and, and being able to aim at a target. I just had to just jump in. Yeah. And yeah. You know, there were a couple teachers that really um, inspired me to just, even if you don't know what the outcome is going to be, just try it. They wanted to build a sailboat, right? <laughs> right. And so, so we, we, we went for it. And um, there just wasn't enough time, but yeah. he wanted to do it even though yeah. You know, there were people saying, I don't know if we can do it. He's like, let's just go. I think we can. I think we can. And just, yeah. He'd, yeah. he'd never done that with a group of students before. Yeah. Right. That first year, I was a little bit scared. Do you remember Fra Francis Ring? Did you ever meet Francis Ring? He really challenged my thinking in, in terms of... I always thought I was a, a crazy math whiz, and I would never encounter anything that a student, a question that a student would have that I couldn't. I couldn't handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Francis really challenged me. Uh -huh. And at first I was really scared. Like, you know, what am I gonna do for this kid? Yeah. Until I said until I just let go of it and said, you know what, it's okay if I don't have all the answers. We're gonna find the answers together. Yeah. And we started working one on one at lunch and he, we would challenge each other. He would bring a question for me to try to challenge me. Yeah. And I would try to challenge him with the question. Wow. And that's, that's how awesome. we that's how he learned basically for two years. That was probably a big learning experience for me. Just, yeah. I'm okay with it now. If I don't have the answers, I'm okay with it. We're learning together and that's cool.